Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video we're going to be working out how to calculate the area between two curves. So let's just pretty much start off with the basics. So if you have a function on x, y axis, so in other words we just have a curve f of x, and we want to find the region between two bounds, so let's say a and b, and you want to find this region here, all you need to do is pretty much integrate from a to b, of that specific function with respect to x or the given variable that it's pretty much there and that will give you this shaded region here okay now what if we have another function where pretty much let's draw another set of axes except it's not f of x it's like g of x so a different function here so let's just say um, g of x and we want to find this region here between the same bounds a and b well, it will be the same calculation, except instead of f of x, it will be g of x. So this region here will be the integral from a to b of g of x. So this would be this shaded region here. Now, let's say, so let's get rid of this now. We had both of them on the same axes. So we had x, y, and we had f of x. And we had g of x as well. And we wanted to find the region between them of a specific set of bounds, so a and b again. How could we find this region here, which is indicated by the blue region? Well, the first area, so when we calculated the integral from a to b of f of x, it gave me the entire region under the curve, so this entire region here was that and when we calculated the integral for g of x so instead of f of x it was g of x it gave me this region down here so if you want to work out the light blue region what you're going to do is find the difference between the two of them so in other words the integral of a and b of f of x minus the integral from a of b of g of x this will give you the area of the region between the two curves. Now, because they have the same bounds, we can actually combine them into a single integral because they're both from A to B, respectively. So we can write them as the integral from A to B of f of x minus g of x. So in other words, if you're integrating and you have two curves, you want to find the area between them top function minus the bottom function respectively okay now it also works when you have a function of y so in other words let's say we have an x and y axis again so x and y and we have a function here but instead of f of x it's f of y so it's a function that depends purely on y so i'm just going to move that down and move it a bit too high and make that a little bit smaller and we wanted to find this region here. And let's say these bounds were A and B again. The area here will be the integral from A to B of f of y, however, with respect to dy. So instead of a dx, it's a dy. Now let's say we had another function here, directly like here. So let's call that g of y now, okay? And you want to define this region here. Well, it'll be the exact same idea. It'll be the integral from a to b of f of y, your top function, from this reference frame. So imagine you're standing here and you're looking this way. Your top function, f of y, minus your bottom function, which would be g of y. And that would give you the area of that red region there. Okay, so it works for both a function of x and a function of y. So for context, what we've just discussed there is pretty much a function of x. So f of x means y. So for example, y equals x squared, y equals sine x, or anything like that. When I said f of y, that means a function of x. So x equals y squared, x equals sine of y. Okay where x is no longer your independent variable, but y is. And up here, x is your independent variable and y isn't. 
Okay. So let's get into some specific examples. So we'll start off with some basic area under curves and then we'll take a look at some other examples. So calculate the area of the region by the curve y equals minus x squared plus 5, the x-axis and the y-axis. So if you want to have a go at this one on your own, just feel free to pause the video and have a crack of it yourself. Right, so first of all, we need to see what this curve looks like. So we're just going to graph an x-y-axis, so x and y. And we can see straight away it's a parabola. Now, a parabola typically looks like this. So this is your y equals x squared parabola. However, two translations have occurred to it. It's been reflected and it's been shifted up by five units. So when you have negative in front of the x squared, it's going to be reflected like this. So this would be y equals minus x squared. However, it's also got a plus five. So it's also been moved up here. So this new curve here would be y equals minus x squared plus 5. So all we're going to do is pretty much draw that and then from there we're going to realize what area we're going to be calculating. So I'll just rub this out. So let's try and draw this. That is a terrible parabola. So this is y equals minus x squared plus 5 and we can see calculate the area region by the curve and the x-axis and the y-axis so obviously it's talking about this region here okay now we don't know what our bounds are but we can see the bounds are going to be our x-intercepts so we can find the x-intercepts by setting y equal to zero so x-intercept y equals zero so we have zero equals minus x squared plus five move the five to the other side so we have minus five equals minus x squared Divide both sides by negative 1. So we get 5 equals x squared. Then we're going to square root both sides to cancel out that squared. So we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So that means when y is equal to 0, x is square root of 5. Or x equals negative square root of 5. So this would be the first point, square root of 5, 0. And this would be the second point, negative square root of 5, 0. Okay. So now we're going to rub this out. We don't need this anymore. So the integral that will calculate this area will be from this point to this point of our function. So the area is the indefinite integral from minus root 5 to root 5 of our function minus x squared plus 5 with respect to x. Okay, so all we're going to do is integrate this, so add 1 to the power here, so we have minus x to the power 3, divide by 3, and attach an x to the constant, so 5x. And we have minus root 5, and 5 as our bounds. Now we're going to substitute in the upper bound first, so we'll get minus square root of 5 cubed on 3, plus 5 times the square root of 5, subtract, substitute in the lower bound now, brackets, minus negative square root of 5 cubed on 3, plus 5 times negative square root of 5. Right. Here we can just leave this how it is, so we can go, this is just minus the square root of 5 all cubed on 3, and this can just be plus 5 root 5. When you cube a number, it still remains negative. So if we wanted to, these negatives can cancel out because a negative times a negative is a positive. And then we have this negative on the outside. So we apply it to here and here. So what we're going to have is minus square root of 5 cubed on 3. This would be minus square root of 5 times 5, so minus 5 times square root of 5, but we have this negative here, so it's going to be positive 5 root 5, okay? We can see from this that this is exactly the same as that, and this is exactly the same as that. So if we wanted to, we could just write one of them and put a times 2 in front of it. So we have 2 times minus the square root of 5, or cubed, on 3, plus 5 root 5. We can distribute that 2, so we have minus 2 square root of 5 cubed 
on 3 plus 10 root 5, okay? And that would be the exact area, pretty much. If you plug this in the calculator, you're going to get approximately 14.9 as your area. And that's how you would answer this question here. If you have any questions about what I've done in this um, question, leave something in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. But let's move on to the next one. So, find the exact area of the region enclosed by the graph y equals x times 2 minus x times by x minus 3 and the x-axis. Okay, so taking a look at this thing straight away, I can see it's going to be a cubic because x times x times x, that will be the highest degree, gives me x cubed. But I already know what this kind of looks like. So what we're going to do straight away is graph it on a set of axes. These represent each of my roots of my solution, so all the x-intercepts. So what this is saying is when y equals 0, x will be 0, x will be positive 2, and x will be positive 3. So those are my x-intercepts. So I know there's a solution here. A solution here and a solution here however I don't know which way the curve is going I don't know if it's coming down like this or it's going up like that so the way we can tell is we if we can work out whether the x cubed term is positive or negative the reason why is because all right, if we have y equals x cubed it's gonna look like this where it's pretty much coming down from down here if we have the curve y equals minus x cubed we know it's gonna look something like this so determining what, whether x cubed term is positive or negative is so important to draw the rest of this curve, okay? So straight away, we're going to expand our stuff. So I'm just going to get rid of all this. So we'll have y equals x times by 2 minus x times by x minus 3. So distribute this guy first. y equals 2x minus x squared multiplied by x minus 3, right, times the x by this and the negative 3 by this. So we're going to have 2x minus x squared multiplied by x uh, minus 3 times by 2x minus x squared. So all we're going to do is distribute this x to each of those terms there and the minus 3 to each of those terms there. So what we're going to have is 2x squared minus x cubed minus 6x plus 3x squared. So we're going to have, and this is still equal to y, y equals minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x. Right, so we're, now we can see it is a negative. So rather than looking like this, it's going to be coming down from here. So we know our cubic is going to take on this shape kind of. So I'll draw that a bit better. It's going to be starting from up here. That's even worse. <laughs> Comes through, curves around, curves around. So this is what our curve looks like. So the reason why this is very important is because this region here would be negative and this one's going to be positive. So we're going to have to apply some negatives to our integrals to work out the exact area. So we'll just leave it like that actually. That looks cool. So we don't really need the rest of this working now. Um, but if you want to go back to it, just rewind the video. All we need is this, really. Now, it was good to expand this because this is going to be very easy to integrate. Now, we know what these numbers are. This is the point 0, 0. This is the point 2, 0. And this is the point 3, 0. This region here, because it's below the x-axis, will be negative. So, in order to account for the area, we need to chuck a negative sign in front of that integral. So, this is region... Let's call this region 1, and let's call this region 2. So region 1, the area will be negative, the integral from 0 to 2 of my function, minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x dx. For region number 2, it will be the integral from 2 to 3 of minus x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x dx. Okay, so now we can just move this guy to the side and move these integrals up so we have enough room. So the total area, pretty much, so if I get rid of this and get rid of that, the total area will be this integral plus 
this integral here. So if I move this over here and this here, oh, forgot the bound. The area will be the sum of these two integrals. If we want, we can leave the negative at the front or we can multiply it by everything in there. So what we're going to do is multiply it. So this will be positive, this will be negative, and this will be positive. So let's just update that very quickly. Minus, positive, positive. And all we're going to do is integrate each of them. So if we integrate the first one, we'll have x cubed on 3 minus 5x cubed. Oh, that's going to be a fourth, sorry. That's a, sorry, that, that stays a 3. This becomes a 4. x cubed on 3 plus 6x squared on 2. 0 and 2, plus brackets negative x to the 4 on 4, plus 5x cubed on 3, minus 6x squared on 2, from 2 to 3. Now we're going to substitute our upper and lower bound, so let's calculate this region first. So if we put the 2 in, we're going to get 2 to the 4, over 4, minus 5 to the 2 on cubed, minus 3, uh, divide by 3, plus 6 to the 2 or squared on 2. And that is the green bit because the next bound is 0 and that cancels out pretty much. If you put in the 0 into either of these terms, you just get 0. So you imagine there's like a minus 0 here. But we don't need to write that because it's just a waste of space. For this region here, so that's that one. And that's that one. We put in the 3 first, so we have minus 3 to the 4th on 4, plus 5 to the 3 on 3 on 3, minus 6 on 3 on squared on 2. Subtract minus 2 to the 4 on 4, plus 5 to the 2 on cubed on 3, minus 6 to squared on 2. That. So that is the entire blue bit there. Okay. Righto. So from that, if you calculate each of the individual parts, what you're going to be left with is minus 81 on 4 plus 18 plus 32 minus 8 or 80 on 3. If you add that all together, you're going to get 50 minus. 243 plus 320 on 12, which gives you 50 minus 563 on 12, which then will give you 37 on 12, which is your exact area. So 37 on 12 is approximately 3.08. So that will be the exact area of the curve. So the reason why I actually rushed the arithmetic here is mainly because this video is more about setting up the integrals and calculating the area. Each of these individual parts isn't really that too difficult and most of it could be done in a calculator. But setting up the graph and the bounds is probably the most important part of this video. Okay? If you have any questions about this one here, leave something in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. Let's move on to the next question now. Okay, so... We've done a little bit of practice with um, areas on the curves. Now we're going to do um, area between curves. So find the area of the region bounded by the parabola y equals x squared and y equals 2x. Okay, so step one is just graph the thing pretty much. So we can see the line has a gradient of 2 but it doesn't have any c um, y-intercept. So we know it's going to go straight through the origin. Okay, so this here would be y equals 2x. Okay. And our parabola, we know it's going to look somewhat like this. So this is y equals x squared. So when it says find the area of the region bounded by the parabola and the line, we know it's talking about this specific region here. So this would be whatever this value would be. So when they intersect. So the lower bound we can see is going to be 0, but we don't know what this bound is going to be. So point of inter section can be calculated by equating each of them. So when x squared equals 2x, 
we can see we can cancel out x and we get x equals 2. So this means there's a solution at x equals 0 and a solution at x equals 2. So we know this value is 2. So we can see area between curves. So it's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of your top function. In this case, here's the line 2x minus your bottom function, which is x squared dx. So this will be your area. So if we move that, move this out the way. All we're going to do is integrate. So 2x to the power of 2 divided by 2 minus x cubed on 3 between 0 and 2 is your area. Substitute in 2 and we won't need to put in 0 because there's no other constant. They're all x's so you get 0 anyway. So we get 2, 2 squared on 2 minus 2 cubed on 3. 2 is cancel out so we get 4 minus 8 on 3 which gives you 4 on 3 is your area, okay? Right, let's move on to the next question. So, scroll down. Calculate the area of the region enclosed by the curves with the equations y equals x squared plus 1 and y equals 4 minus x squared and the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Okay, so straight away, we're going to graph it. So, x y and we can see we've got two parabolas now this parabola here is a normal parabola but it's been shifted up by one so we know it's going to look like this so y equals x squared plus one and this one here has been shifted up by four so it's up here however it's been turned over so it looks something like this So this would be y equals 4 minus x squared. Now you might jump to conclusion and say, oh, that's the area there. However, you've got to read the rest of the question. It said, and the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. So what that pretty much means is wherever x equals 1, now we can't assume it's going to be inside here or outside there. We actually have to work it out. And the way we can work it out is we can find where these two curves intersect and then all right draw either a line here or here because we actually don't know geometrically um, where it is at the moment so if we find out where they intersect we'll know if it's going to be in the left so either here here or whether it's going to be here and here pretty much so let's just work that out so when x squared plus one equals four minus x squared move the x squared to the other side so you get two x squared move the one to the other side so you get three so x squared equals three on two and if you square root both sides you get plus or minus the square root of three on two so that's going to give you square root so if you put that in your calculator the square root of three on two which gives you approximately 1.2 so that means the lines are going to be inside before the point of intersection. So when x equals 1 and x equals minus 1. Because this point here is when x is equal to 1.2. So that's why we had to calculate that very quickly. So we know where it is in our picture. So the, this is actually fairly easy because we got given our bound straight away. So the area is the indefinite integral from negative 1 to 1. Now our top function in this case here is this guy here, which is the curve y equals 4x, y equals minus x squared. So we get 4 minus x squared. So top function, subtract your bottom function, which is this guy here, which is this curve here. So x squared plus 1 brackets dx. Right, so area, integrate each of the terms. So we can actually simplify them. So if we apply the negative in here, we're going to get 4 minus x squared minus x squared minus 1. So if we simplify that inside bit, we're going to get the area is the integral from negative 1 to 1 of minus 2x squared plus 3 
dx and then from that it's a simple calculation. So the area is going to be minus 2x cubed on 3 plus 3x negative 1 and 1. Putting in the 1 first so we have minus 2 the 1 cubed on 3 plus 3 to the 1. Subtract minus 2 negative 1 cubed on 3 plus 3 times negative 1. From there we can start working this out. This is going to be minus 2 on 3 plus 3. Um, negative 1 cubed is still negative 1 times by negative 2 is positive 2 so we're going to have minus 2 on 3 plus 3. So in other words we've got two of the same thing so we can put our times 2 in front of this so we get minus 4 on 3 plus 6 and from that we're going to get 14 on 3. So that is the area of our enclosed region. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about this one here, leave something in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. But let's move on to the final question, I believe, of the video. I don't have any other ones planned. So, find the region, find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals x. Right, so let's graph this. So a cubic. So we have that's our cubic. And our line looks something, but we've got to make actually draw this a bit better, sorry. Let's draw our line first, actually. That's a better idea. And we missed the origin. So it's going to go right through here. So this is g of x. And our cubic looks like that. So I've drawn it a bit small, but I can try and make it a little bit bigger. So we can emphasize on what the actual area is. That's a bit better. So the area enclosed is this area here and this area here. So this one's a bit different, mainly because in two separate regions, we have two top and two bottom functions. So for example, in this region here, my top function is g of x. Now we're going to work out what that intersection is. So in other words, when does f of x equal g of x? f of x is x cubed and g of x is x. So we can cancel one out. So we get x equals 0 and we get x squared equals 1. So that means x needs to be 1 or x needs to be minus 1. So that's the first solution there. That's the solution when x equals 1. And this is the solution when x equals negative 1. Okay. Right. right. So for this first region here, we'll call that region 1 and we'll call that region 2. Region 1 can be calculated with this. So the area equals the integral between 0 and 1 of my top function, which is f of um, g of x, sorry. So g of x minus f of x, so x cubed minus x dx. And then region 2, the area is integral from negative 1 to 0. And my top function now is f of x, so um, uh, top minus bottom. My mistake, so this one should be the other way around. So it's got to be um, x minus x cubed, and this one here will be x cubed minus x. Okay? So all we're going to do is work out those integrals and we'll get the total area. So the total area will be this integral plus this integral here. So all we're going to do is just integrate them. So what we're going to get is the area gives me x squared on 2 plus, well not plus, minus, sorry, minus x to the 4 on 4, 0 and 1, plus x4 on 4 minus x squared on 2 of negative 1 and 0. Plugging in the 1, that's all we need to do because we have a 0. So we have 1 squared on 2 minus 1 to the 4 minus a 0. But we don't need to write that. If we put in the 0 first, we'll get 0. So we're going to have minus bracket negative 1 to the 4 on 4 minus negative 1 squared on 2. This one's going to be a half minus a quarter. This is going to be um, minus a quarter 
plus or minus a half. Um, that's going to be positive, negative, oh, it's positive a half. So we're going to get 1 minus a half, which gives you a half, and that is the area enclosed. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll probably be doing more videos like this. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed.